All right. All right. This is on you. This one. This next one. Yeah, so I got a question for you. Raise your hand if you have an answer for me. Like, why in the hell are colleges and universities in the United States still mandating vaccines for the spring semester? Um, or you won't be allowed to attend. Does anyone have an answer for me on that question? Um, because the vaccine... I don't even want to repeat that. <laughs> you have no <laughs> if idea? If I repeated the, uh, to, Because the vaccine prevents the spread... <laughs> Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea why colleges and universities in the United States are still mandating vaccines for the spring semester. It really makes no sense at this point. I mean, for young people, right? I I could understand maybe if it was for universities where you had people with comorbidities. Like it was called comorbidity university. Mm. Like, and those are the only people that were allowed to attend that university, right? These are people with comorbidities, maybe elderly comorbidity people uh, in one university. In one university. Okay. Can you imagine that student union? No. Comorbidity university where where you, I, I maybe I could understand it then, but even then, like forcing people to do something with their bodies, I, I still can't, I still can't, uh, uh, I, you know, stand behind. So um, I want you to listen to a couple of doctors who, um, or had some thoughts about this uh, on on mandating vaccines for universities. Take a listen. Dr. Hamadi, there are still some schools that are forcing students to get the COVID vaccine like Harvard University. The website states that in order to register for spring term, students have to be compliant with all vax requirements. This includes the annual flu shot as well as the, as the bivalent Omicron specific COVID-19 booster. Again, Dr. Hamadi, I mean, this is forcing a shot on students that are completely healthy and have an infinitesimally small chance of dying from this virus. Don't understand this, considering you can spread it with the vaccine anyway, right? I mean, you can spread the virus even if you're vaccinated. Exactly, Laura, and that's the problem, is when the vaccines first came out, we were told repeatedly by the drug companies, by the White House, by so many others, that this will prevent you from getting infected and spreading it. We know that is no longer true. It was never true, but now, after so many months and years of experience now, we know that's absolutely false. So what is the purpose of forcing people who are perfectly healthy, who are in some of the lowest risk strata, to take something which we know also could have side effects. You, every medical decision is a risk-benefit ratio, and when you have minimal to zero benefit, but you have some risk, no matter how much that is, that risk-benefit ratio may not work out. And so it's frankly, I think, unethical because it's coercive, and you're forcing people to take something that puts them at risk with minimal benefit, not only to themselves, but even to the people around them, given what we now know about the vaccines. Uh, on top of that, we have as Dr. McCary was just pointing out, very little data, especially regarding this bivalent Omegron uh, booster shot. We have antibody production data. We don't have data on anything related to mortality, mm -hmm. long COVID, serious uh, infections or hospitalizations. And for, for children, we have actually zero data. They're just referencing oh, the no, adult it's... data with that. Oh, so zero data. Mm -hmm. So, but you remember uh, the head of the CDC in the fall, she's like, you know, but our recommendation when she was asked about this, we played that sound on our show. What, what, when, you know, what's your recommendation? Well, our recommendation going into the fall is just everyone get the booster. Just get it. Don't even ask questions. Just get it. That's what she said. So here are the colleges still requiring the COVID booster shots. And what's interesting is they were, these schools are now like pivoting to require the booster shots. So not even just the straight up, they're just pivoting to the booster shot. So here are all, let's see if your state pops up here. Okay, Alabama, nothing. Alaska, nothing. Arizona, nothing. Indiana, you got DePaul University, St. Mary's, Holy Cross, University of Notre Dame, Valparaiso, California. Look at California. Holy smokes. All of these California universities and colleges. The list is pretty endless there. Kentucky, uh, Louisiana, Maine, Bates College, Colby College in Maine, Maryland, Johns Hopkins, Johns Hopkins. Oh, man. Um, Massachusetts, Amherst College, Bentley College, Bay Path, Colorado, Fort Lewis, University of Colorado at Boulder, uh, University of Denver, Connecticut. I mean, the list is endless. Delaware, D District of Columbia, Florida, nothing. Uh, a, because in Florida, the Surgeon General um, has said that he does not recommend it for all populations, and especially not the mRNA for Ch kids. for college-aged men. Yeah. So Florida, there you go. Uh, 
Arizona also not on this list. Hawaii, Michigan, Idaho not on this list. Illinois, Minnesota. This is really, I mean, and that's just that was just up through. Now we can go N N through Z. Oregon, Nebraska, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Look at all these. Bucknell, Cabrini, Carnegie Mellon University, Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. <laughs> I mean, when most workplaces have now dropped a vaccine mandate, uh, why on a, a population of mostly healthy young people Great would this question. continue to be in place? Great uh, question. Especially when you have the choice to vaccinate yourself if you want to, why do you care about your neighbor being vaccinated or not, or your coworker or your classmate? Well, Biden's COVID czar, um, his name is uh, Ashish Jha, this afternoon, he said that he thinks this is God's will for all of us to get the COVID shot. It's God's will. That's why you were given these two arms. Listen. I really believe this is why God gave us two arms, one for the flu shot and the other one for the COVID shot. Okay. okay. And there is. Yeah, that's why you got like, two arms. Where's where's faith in that scenario? No, no. No, like you're supposed to just have faith and not not have to take anything because and this is also why God gave us the biopharmaceutical complex. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you notice Dr. Fauci was in that video? He was in the upper left hand quadrant of that video. So today was his last White House briefing and the guy went on. He dropped a bomb. He went out on a high note like I, and I literally I was like, wait a second. Is this old like this press conference? No, no, no. This is today. This is him today saying this about getting boosted and getting the vaccine. Dr. Fauci, watch. And vaccinated and unboosted versus vaccinated plus boosted. That doesn't mean you shouldn't get boosted, but the real danger is in the people who have not been vaccinated. So that's where we expect, if we're gonna see a problem this winter, it's gonna- It's gonna be among those people. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> Goodbye, Fauci. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Those people. Those people did didn't they like what didn't they get on Trump about that by saying things like that like isn't that basically inciting violence kind of <laughs> yeah those people establish that on both sides those people <laughs> on both sides those people they're gonna really have a problem okay so we have you know last week the Senate voted sixty two to thirty six to end the emergency declaration although Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer claims that his vote was falsely recorded. As an as a as a an I I uh, and then he f they fix that the declaration of a public health emergency has been used of course as a rationale through a lot of this to suspend the rule of law for nearly three years uh, the Biden administration then of course referring to the state of emergency as a pretext for suspending student loan payments right uh, as well as unconstitutional rent moratoriums. Um, a whole host of things, asking for $10 billion additional in COVID response. And then he's threatened to veto any new congressional efforts to end this national emergency, uh, according to a statement from the Office of Management and Budget. So he's going to veto anything. So if Republicans now in control of the House try to pull something, he's going to he's going to veto it. Doc so then put us keep us in perpetual emergency. Yeah, I mean, that's. At least through, I mean, through the spring, at least. I mean, that's where we are right now. And maybe he'll extend it again. It's going to keep going with this because hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's certainly cover for the biopharmaceutical complex. Sure. So why not? I'm waiting it? for the lights to come out, the, the security level lights. Oh, they have, like, what, uh, where do they have that in New Zealand, level right? Orange. Red alert. They, or is that in Australia? Australia has the traffic lights. Well, the CDC does do a sort of green, orange, red for certain communities and you can search your community. Um, they already do have something like that. It's not really used in they the They could news. just like double up on Smokey the Bear. They could say fire, um, you know, chances high today yeah. and COVID green. Bubba Smith says he had this done in our chat, in our Rumble chat, and says he had a heart attack a few days later, then a blood clot in his leg, mm -hmm. Bubba says. Bubba, I hope you're okay. That's awful. Dr. Rima Libo is a doctor, and she says that this is all about the immuniz immunization agenda 30, 2030, from the United Nations and the World Health Organization. This is Dr. Rima. And she says the Bill Gates and Melinda, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the World Economic or the World uh, Health Organization, all part of this. And it's printed right on there, implementing the immunization agenda 2030 by adding these additional round of, uh, of vaccines. Listen to what she has to say about that. Immunization agenda 2030 impact goal indicators and targets 
lays out that by 2030, there will be 500 new vaccines introduced. And under the Immunization Agenda 2030, which is part of One Health, no man, woman, or children, child will have an exemption. Well, of course, the elite will have an exemption because they wouldn't do this to their bodies. But you and I, those of us who survive to that point, will be forcibly jabbed. No one left behind is how they put it, which really means no one left alone. So that's the that's the implementation, the implement, implementing the immunization agenda 2030. You can read all about it right on the World Health Organization's website. So I mean, that we've already seen that happen in New York City when the garbage collectors uh, sued the city for vaccine mandates and showed that there was an exemption in the city for entertainment entertainers and artists. They did not have to get vaccinated or follow vaccine mandates, but trash collectors, sanitation workers who had so little interaction with the public were forced to take this or else lose their job. They won that litigation, but there's still an appeal to get their jobs back. But she's right. Um, the elite will not be subjected to this. It's just sort of the normal idiots like us. Brad Wil Wildman in our chat says it's divine vaccination. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, divine mm -hmm. vaccination. The the God wanted you to have one arm for two arms for for a flu shot and uh, for a COVID shot. Uh, so if anyone has an idea as to why these colleges, I mean, and I thought it was just going to be a few. As I started going through the data, I thought, oh, maybe it's just going to be Harvard where this kind of story. No, no, hundreds upon hundreds of universities and colleges across the United States sticking to this mandate. Yeah, really, really Th that's shocking in this day and age. Yeah, really troubling. All right, we've got more news to get to on this old Tuesday. We're going to talk about uh, Sweden could be vindicated over how it handled things during the lockdowns compared to what's going on in the United Kingdom. We'll show you that. Plus, we're going to talk about a little World Cup, wokeism, and all of that. But first, on this show, we're constantly trying to better understand the world around us.